Welcome to this uh, very quick demo of a K2 offline forms. Um, in this demonstration, I'm just going to show you a KD form um, through the web, through the browser, and then what we'll do is we'll have a look at that through the K2 mobile app and uh, go and switch it into offline mode and see what that looks like. So the form that we are looking at is this one. Uh, it's just a very simple inspection form. Uh, effectively, you'll notice logging in through the browser, what's happened is it's automatically found out, uh, filled in a couple of details, it knows who I am, it's filled in some of my own details inside here. And then a few little features that we've added onto this form is first that of a cascading drop-down. So if I go here and I choose a truck, what you'll notice is now that I have a list of trucks. So you can see how that's going to work in offline mode. And if I say that this is an inspection of a tank, what you'll notice is that I have now a list of tanks. But I also have some additional sections that I now need to complete, for example, how many rockets are on board. All right. Um, the other things that it's got, if I go and choose a fuel level and then go and choose a very low fuel level, it starts sort of bringing up a height and showing based upon certain values. Um, other things that you will see is that I can add a, a photo over here. But to make it a little bit more interesting, I've also given you the ability to, um, um, base upon a template, so this rows that have come, that have been added, effectively have uh, been added by a template in the background so we can go and change this template and when the form opens up you know these questions over here will be uh, different. Each of these questions itself I can go and click into and then I can go and specify maybe a tire trip, uh, depth and if there are defects I can then take a photo of a defect. So if you think about that that's an ability for each row to go and add certain information including a photograph um, uh, against that and obviously that data can be used later. So that's this form connected uh, online. Uh, let's go and have a look at what it looks like in an offline mode. So let me bring up my, uh, my, my phone. Okay, so here's my phone. I'm just mirroring it. Uh, what we can see on my phone is uh, there is the, the K2 application, uh, sorry, the K2 mobile app that's available on the uh, App Store. So first I'm going to drill down into that. How it opens, first of all, is uh, I normally just see my task list. So I've got a couple of tasks that I need to uh, interact with and approve here. If I go into my menu and I go to my forms, with inside of my forms there, I can see a number of different forms. If I go into inspections, I can see there is a form to do with vehicle inspections. Now what you'll notice is that there's a little blue tab um, against that particular form. It's now disappeared. What's in fact happened is that it's now downloaded that form onto my device. So if I were to go into uh, flight mode now, um, I'll be able to complete that form. Now, I can't actually go into flight mode uh, in this demo, otherwise uh, I won't be able to show you my screen. But what we have built into uh, the app is the ability to, for testing is to go and switch on uh, offline mode. So effectively, this makes the app into an offline mode as if it's not connected. So if you go back into there, if I go into inspections, you can see my form still there. And now if I open that up, this is the form in an offline mode. So what you'll notice first of all, straight off the bat, is that it's uh, um, one of the K2 responsive UI capabilities, is that it's realigned this form. It's exactly the same form. It's realigned it uh, to best fit my mobile device. So you can see the way that the, that the fields have been moved, so I just have to scroll up and down. So that's the first thing that's taken place. What's also happened here is that you'll notice that it has already got my basic details inside here. So even though it was, it's offline, it's already been able to pre-fill some of the information for me. As I go down to choosing the equipment type, what you'll notice is I've got my drop-down information inside here. Let's go and choose a truck again. And now if I go to the equipment, you can see there I've got a number of different trucks. And the same if I go into choosing a tank, you'll see there's a bunch of uh, different types of equipment for the tank. So I'll choose one of those types of tanks. Choose an oil level, again, choosing a low amount, giving me that warning message inside there. Uh, I can go and fill in certain information, how many rockets are on board. Let's go and do that. And then as I go down, I can go and attach that photo. Or indeed, I can go now to each of those elements that we, showed, that we had a little bit earlier. So I've got my front left, my right left, all those different information inside there. Let's turn that to the side. Let's go to the front left, and I click on that particular one. That opens up that little subsection where I need to go and put in the tight tread depth. Just going to add that in. I'll say that I did see a, a, a defect, and what I'm going to do is take a photo of the defect. So tap on that. Brings up the ability to take a photo directly. So there's, uh, there's my uh, keyboard. Let's uh, take a photo of that defect. 
and use that photo. So that's uploaded. I'll close that particular one. And what we can see is that's added that as a row. Um, I can add a second one again. So this time we're going to add another little tread depth, add another little defect to that, take another photo. This time I'll take a photo of my uh, glasses cover over here. So let's use that photo. And I'll say close. And as we go down, we'll notice, you know, multiple photos, you know, answering multiple things. So it's not just a simple capture form that I'm, I'm showing you here. You know, we've got cascading drop-downs. That data could be coming from a back-end system. In my particular case, it comes from, I think, SAP. Uh, in this particular example, it could come from Office 365 or SharePoint or a SQL Server database or a ERP system. It doesn't really matter. Um, once I've completed uh, those details over there, I can then go and hit the Submit button and start my process. So let's hit submit. Right, and let's have a look at what's taken place here. So if I go into my outbox, what you'll notice is that I now have one in my outbox. What I'm then going to do is switch off the offline mode and we should see uh, that uh, that disappear. There we go. So my outbox is now cleared and we should have that process uh, starting off. Uh, one of the examples that I've done in 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 my uh, in my process is to uh, to once that workflow starts is that it sends me back an email uh, message uh, with a, an attachment of that PDF. So let's give that a couple seconds to start off. Here we go. So in my task list, I can see I've got first approval for inspection 38, and what I'm doing right now is I'm just waiting for that email to come through uh, with the uh, the details of uh, of what what's been submitted off. There we go. So that email's arrived. So you can see it arrived on my desktop. It's also uh, arrived on my phone. So if I go into my phone, I open that particular one up, I can see that I've got a, um, an approval to approve that particular inspection. And what's attached is an inspection PDF. Let's open that on my phone. And there's a PDF document of uh, that inspection that took place with those little photos and those sort of details sitting inside there as well. So if I was now on my phone um, traveling, I could actually reply to this email with either approved or declined and continue that process or I could open that up onto my task list and have a look at that as well. So let's actually just do that in this example. So I'm going to go this time onto uh, my task list on my uh, web client over here. So there's that first inspection. So let's open that particular one up. You can see that is a form that was completed in offline mode. Uh, I can see the two elements that were captured. I can go in and click on those, open up those particular attachments and, and, and have a look at the detail that sits behind there. So that's the, uh, the picture of the keyboard. This one over here was the picture of uh, my Ted Baker uh, sunglasses. What you'll also notice is I can still drill down into each one of those, uh, have a look at more of the detail. What we've added in this approval view is that I've got reviewer comments. So if this were to be rejected and it would go through a, a cycle of review and approval, I'll see that pulled up here. I've also added additional comments and attachments that could be captured now throughout the process that might not have been captured at the beginning. So just a little bit of extension on that. Over here I can decide that I'm going to approve it, submit that off, and effectively that uh, completes my process. So what we had a look at here was a uh, was a offline form that was submitted off. Um, it went through a workflow process, which I'll, I'll bring up over here. So this is the workflow process. Uh, the first thing the workflow did was created a PDF of that form. Uh, it then went to the first approver who got the approval. They could have rejected it back to the initiator and could have caused a recycle to take place again and again. But once that was approved, it went to the second approver. And once that's completed, it goes on and completes a few little things and perhaps sends a text message to the originator letting them know that approval is now completed. So that's obviously just an example of, uh, of the process. Um, the output of that as well is that we could have taken that PDF now and uploaded it into, uh, into Office 365 or your document management system of choice.